do the, the audio just before. So logged in. Hopefully, we don't have any of the audio problems we had last time. But <clears throat> well, I'm all by myself. <laughs> So, oh, perfect. Thank you, Josie. I appreciate that. Looks good. Sounds good. Excellent. Well, it's just you and me, Joe. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, I was actually busy writing a, a blog post, and then, of course, I get interrupted about 50 times a minute between the kids, the wife, dinner, you know, other things I'm trying to do. So, I didn't get to it. But, um, well, am I doing well tonight? I'm um, I'm still unshowered, sweaty from like working outside. Uh, but you know, I've eaten today as well. So, <laughs> oh, my injury is uh, troublesome. Like my back is is a lot better. So they, um, I, I was cutting some wood outside today. We got this big. I think it's an oak. It produces acorn, so that seems to suggest it is. But, um, you know, it's happened before in the forest, actually, when I was walking around. Um, and this is in the area near the house where the kids go and play and stuff. Their branch just, like, fell down. And, um, you know, I didn't realize this. So now I, I start to look at these things. We've got these two big branches that are, like, over where my wife parks a car. And they, like, kind of cracked. So they were still there and sort of alive, but like we've had a couple of um, big wind storm type things. And these things will pull a whole tree down. I mean, um, at a friend's place, a giant uh, tree, when it was huge, this thing was like, you know, the trunk was probably certainly bigger than my trunk. It was probably about, you know, almost a meter across, you know, 60 centimeters, two feet or so. And um, it would just got ripped down you know, like from the roots. Um, and the council cleared it up within a couple of hours. It was really quick. I had a tree fall down on my property near where, you know, at the top of the property where the bees are. Um, and I had to like cut it up and that. So it's not an infrequent thing and it can be dangerous because obviously, you know, if one of those branches falls on one of my kids, that's a dead kid. So um, I strapped up this ladder to it, which I still left out there. Um, Kind of forgot to take it down and got busy with other things. Oh, pardon me. And um, I cut this these branches down and then I, I chopped them up. Um, and it's one of the videos you'll see probably next week or so. I'm like about a week ahead on the actual videos that I post on the Kurganit. Um, so while I was cutting that with a little chainsaw, I got to a point where like I could feel my back was starting to get painful. So I thought, no, I'm going to stop. And then I didn't. I actually found an old man way of working, which you'll see on the video in about a week. And then uh, I carried on. But um, the, the back is, is going to be fine. I, ju I just need to take it easy a little bit, uh, which is the most difficult part. Because, you know, at 53, you start to have to think about these things a little bit because, um, you know, in my 20s, I would just carry on, work through an injury or whatever. But it takes a lot longer for it to heal. And unfortunately, resting is the thing you need to do the most uh, to, to fix it. So it's it's irritating because I'm not used to it. It's frustrating because I'm not a patient man. But um, it's what needs doing. The the more irritating injury is my, is my elbow. This, like, tendonitis that I've got here. Uh, yeah, that's probably going to leave a scar. I scraped myself there like a while back. Um, but, I, you know, it's just really painful. But that too, it improves its sleep. You know, if I sleep enough, then uh, it seems to get better. But I, I'm always working, so it's just, it never really gets healed, I suppose. Um, so that that's just irritating because I can't really... I'm trying not to use the arm, but I am using it every day. So it's like, 
and it's just really painful like um, most times it's painful just just sitting there you know like actually right now it's okay because um I passed out for a couple of hours in the afternoon I went to whew, I was busy doing some stuff on the on the phone and like trying to do a blog post and writing to people and answering emails and stuff and then I just put the phone down I thought oh, I'm just gonna take a rest and I was gone for like two hours just out um, which you know thinking about it when I was training every day when I was doing karate and I was training like six days a week sometimes a couple of day, times a day um, I, I used to do that I used to like train in the morning and then I do whatever in the, in the late morning afternoon and then by around four or five o'clock something like that I would just you know three four o'clock in the afternoon I would just pass out for like two three four hours and my body would get really hot and it would fix a whole bunch of injuries you know like things and dents that you get from training um, I just haven't been able to do it because you know with the kids and that it's it's difficult but I don't know how or why or what the reason is but that's how my body works if if I can do what I want I'll stay up till like 2 3 in the morning wake up late in the morning work straight as soon as I roll out of bed I'm, I'm ready to like go just work um, then take a break usually after the normal lunch time like maybe 2 3 o'clock I'd eat take a break and then it's like you know 3 4 o'clock I could pass out for 2 3 hours easily and wake up again and you know my, my sleeping time would be my ideal sleeping time would be like from 3 in the morning till about 10 <sighs> 10 in the morning something like that um, you know it's rare that I can sleep any more than 3 or 4 hours at a go without waking up you know either wake up to go to the toilet or something it's just I don't know it's, it's been a very long time since I've um, I don't remember the last time I, I had like an uninterrupted like eight hours of sleep. I think maybe five or six is like, I think I might have even mentioned it on a stream. It's such a unusual occurrence. But um, yeah, so I'm a bit, I wouldn't say I'm under the weather, but there's also these flus that have been going around. Some of the kids have got it a little bit and then, you know, they, they stick with it for a while and then eventually I'll catch it or something, which I'm trying to avoid doing. Um, the wife's about ready to pop so that's another um, you know I'm trying to like you know she's like today she, she just went and because I started working outside you know it's just a random thing I just started to clean up a patch of the garden that's been bugging me we've got bamboo shoots coming up everywhere and then that led into another thing and another thing and she's sort of like oh I'm just gonna sweep up the front so she she basically started working and cleaning up the kids toys and doing all sorts of stuff and I'm like let's just chill you know because you know how you do you like she doesn't really pace herself and then she like does everything at once and then she's like tired or like you know like worn out for a couple of days and it's like just gotta you know figure things out properly but um <laughs> Josie says I think I've mastered nighttime toilet runs while still semi asleep yeah, the problem is with us insomniacs, once you're up, you're kind of up. <laughs> but that just reminded me, my dad a few months ago, he was like, you know, oh, I've got all these health problems, you know, <laughs> but he is a hypochondriac, so. And I was like, well, what's wrong, dad? You know, it's like, well, you know, my prostate and I, I have to get examined again and I have to take these tablets and it looks like maybe I have cancer, like, what do you mean you have cancer? Did you get diagnosed with cancer? I mean, like, it's your white blood cell count okay no well they haven't actually found cancer but you know it, it's sort of I seem to have an enlarged prostate and I'm like yeah well dad that's kind of a family trait that's because we kind of use it a lot <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> he's like no no but you don't understand son you know I'm, I'm only in my 70s but I, I get up to pee like you know maybe one sometimes even twice maybe even three times a night sometimes you know two, two twice a night it's, it's, it's just it. I was like, the fuck are you talking about that? You know, I'm, I'm in my 50s and I get up twice a night to take a piss sometimes. It's just, what's wrong with you, man? You're like healthier than I am, probably. So it's just, 
you know, it's all relative. I mean, I don't worry about health or anything like that, but it's true that in every age you've got, you know, to take into account. I mean, when I was in my 20s, um, early 20s, I used to think like, well, okay, my body's fully grown, so I can do anything. And it actually isn't. Your body carries on changing and growing throughout your life, but really your peak of like human strength between, you know, average between your muscles, your bones and everything, if you've trained from when you were young, which I have, is actually in your 30s. You know, your 30s is actually your best sort of health-wise time. Because in your 20s, your body's still getting, your bones are not as dense as they can be and so on. Um, and if you're lucky, you know, if you've got decent genes, you can, you can go pretty well into your 40s as well, which I have done. I'm in my 50s now, and, you know, I can see that I'm slowing down. But to be fair, part of that is is also I don't have the time to, like, train, eat, and sleep the way that I would like to, um, which is fine because it's due to having kids and stuff. Yeah, one of which just woke up. So give me a minute. Think of some random questions. Remember that the, um, the heading is uh, the truth about farm life. <laughs> give me a sec. I'm just going to look after the little dude. Think up of some questions. Fire them in the chat. And I'll catch up when I get back in a minute. Or something. Shame, a little dude. He had a, a little accident because uh, I leaked out of his nappy, so I just changed him. And he, he's got a protection blanket and stuff, so it's fine. But he just needed a change and a towel under him and stuff. But okay, here I am. Uh, Under Bear said, thanks for the Italian farm advice. You're most welcome. Juicy, have you read much from Malachi Martin? I've read um, the Malachi Martin book about uh, exorcism. I forget the name of it. 
jousting with the devil, I can't remember, um, which is probably the scariest book I've ever read. Um, and it's presented as a semi, no, it's presented as fact, but we changed the names and so on so that you can't, um, you know, find the people. Um, it reads like absolutely true to me. And uh, unfortunately, I've had some experiences that tell me that what he wrote about is uh, absolutely factual. Um, the reason I said it's one of the scariest books that I've ever read is that I think in reading that book, uh, it makes you aware, aware of um, demons and stuff like that. And for certain people who might be, I don't want to use the word weak-minded, but let's say susceptible to being uh, affected by these spiritual entities, it could open a door for 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 them to get in there, not because Malachi Martin designed it that way at all, but because just by simply becoming aware of it, um, they become aware that you are aware of them. So it kind of opens a little door, you know, because you're like your curiosity, like people that play with the Ouija board, you know, it's like, oh, you might just do it as a game, but your curiosity leads you into places where you don't belong. As H.P. Lovecraft would say, you know, there are vast entities out there that hate you <laughs> and want to eat your brain and will try and do so at any opportunity you give them. So, um, it's, you know, it's, it is definitely a, a scary book, but um, I don't recommend reading it, to be honest, unless, you know, you're pretty mentally and spiritually tough. Um, I would suggest you only read that if you are a practicing proper set of acantist. Um, and, you know, if you have a need to read that for some reason, like maybe you've encountered these, these things or, you know, you've got a friend that's got that sort of a problem or whatever. Um, but it is a, you know, I'd say be careful. It's one of those, uh, again, to return to the H.P. Lovecraft theme, it's one of those books that, you can lose sanity points reading <laughs> and um, makes you more susceptible to possession. Literally. So, you know. Holy Ram, I missed the speed in which I recovered and healed when I was 20. I don't miss how stupid I was back then. Ma, I was never really very stupid. I was just um, possibly a little bit reckless. Um, possibly... Uh, not, not possibly, definitely a bit, um, I wouldn't say merciless, but certainly a, like hard, hard, just, which it's not that I've got any less hard. In fact, in some ways I've got harder, but, um, you know, I present better to the rest of the world with experience of how to deal with other humans. <laughs> Since you're not living in a city anymore, does it feel to you like, Winters are getting colder, longer, or staying the same? Um, well, I've only been here like, you know, a year and a half. So I've only gone through the first winter here, which was the first one. Um, you know, we arrived in February, so that winter was sort of finishing. So we had one winter here and uh, it was cold. You know, and it snowed a little bit, which is not a yearly event where I am, but um, it has snowed both years. But the thing that I keep thinking about is that the um, it's going to be a grand solar minimum. So in 2021, the four magnetic phases of the sun all went out of sync. And forgive me while, if I have it here, I light a mosquito killing poisonous coil because oh crap they uh they're eating me alive here give me one second i'm fire more questions i'm just gonna light up one of these things to keep me from being eaten alive
so it was dead. There we go. Now this is a memory from my youth. When we lived in Nigeria, we practically lived on these things because you know there's all sorts of um, critters in Nigeria, including jumping baboon spiders, which aren't affected by this. But the mosquitoes give you malaria there, so and probably the mosquitoes here now give you. I don't know, Zika or whatever Bill Gates has injected them with, but I think you're worse off in Florida for that. <laughs> Apparently Bill Gates uh, has released a bunch of mosquitoes with some kind of weirdness in them. I don't know, I don't keep up. Um, where was I? Oh, winter. Yeah, the solar minimum of 2021, like the four phases of the sun, the magnetic phases of the sun have gone out of sync. And the last ice age, only two of those were out of sync. So I figure we're going to get increasingly cold winters um, because that is the prediction from a Russian uh, meteorologist's model, which uh, is like a 30 year model that's predicted things to like 96 to 98 percent accuracy. So, um, and it's based on the sun, not what's happening here on Earth in terms of, you know hydrocarbons and all that so hostage to the devil I think yes that's the one thanks Joe that's the Malachi Martin book I read um, Sam Wareb says greetings what uh, varieties of olives do you grow how many trees do you keep and how much yield do you plan for those are all good questions but uh, what varieties of olive do I grow I don't know because I don't know anything about olives other than they grow on the tree you know, they look green until they turn black. <laughs> That's um, the full extent of my olive knowledge. Um, the property was advertised as having 400 trees, but I haven't actually counted all of them. I've counted, I got up to a 165 for sure, and I did a rough head count. I, I think at least I've got 300, but I don't know whether the, the advertising was... Um, was honest or not and I, I have started labeling the, the, the trees but again it's another one of those things I only got so far with because I cut out these little metal well originally actually I got these plastic plaques which I bought which were pretty expensive or like over a buck each and you put them into the ground and you can write the number on and I did yay great and it lasted about a week and a half and then the Sun just made this plastic so brittle it just became they would break so easily, so I pulled them all out, so otherwise they would just become plastic trash all over the place. So the next thing is I got some uh, wire, and I cut out about 400 little squares like this with a hole in it, and then I bought this little tool to like engrave the number on it. And I started a, um, a spreadsheet where I started to put the number of the trees, my guesstimate of how old it is, and uh, you know whether I managed to prune it that year or not. So there was a bunch of stuff, and I, I only got to like 365 or something like that. And I've done a few more, um, I've labeled a few more um, little squares, but it's just a bit painful to um, to do that that engraving thing. It like it numbs your hand after a while, so you can only do about like 10 or 15 numbers before your hand gets a bit numb. And I don't really. You know, I've got tendonitis in one hand, I've got a twinge of it in the other arm just because of hacking and chopping and pulling and pushing and stuff. So it's taking a little bit easy, but maybe um, I'll get, I, I do want to get back on there now that it's all cleared up. It's a lot easier as well. Um, and I do want to label all the trees because um, there is, you know, the guy who sold me the property left a whole bunch of things that need fixing. So. That's one of them, and I'm just getting my little flags in order first, but uh, we'll see how that goes. And Joe C says, oh, sorry, hostage to the devil. AE says, interesting topic. I wanted to email you specifically on the subject. My fiance and I have recently been, you could say, terrorized by some entities recently. Well, that happens unfortunately and again i don't want to open too many doors for people that may be susceptible to this but the fact is once you commit to becoming properly christian which means instead of a cantist catholic that 
can happen. Um, and that's because you've not put a uniform on. You see, as long as you're some kind of headless retarded chicken just going around like whatever doing you know oh the latest iphone and i'm gonna watch you know reality tv and blah you're not a threat to any kind of spiritual entity that is evil and wants us to fail but the minute you take on praying the rosary going to a proper mass you know reading books uh, instead of digesting reality tv and maybe like looking at information that is more worthwhile and you start to live your life in a certain way and you start to become an example for others to follow and sort of discuss with and talk about then you get attacked um my worst attacks came when when i was just i wasn't even baptized yet when i just started looking in you know when i had that first experience and then i started to like really research christianity properly and Catholicism specifically, and um, yeah, those that, that were some horrific <laughs> attacks. Um, but I've always had a very strong mental approach to these things. I had encountered these entities <clears throat> before I was any kind of Christian or even remotely thought about being a Christian, and they never worried me, they never really scared me much because they were like, Yeah, fuck you, I'm more powerful. The entities that um, attacked me after my uh, road to Damascus moment were of a very different order of power, let's put it that way. Um, and a lady that I have never met physically, but that we, you know, both my wife and I w were talking with, she was part of a group that we, we were in and that's since been banned from Facebook and whatever, but, um, you know, there, there was a, a Facebook group that we both belonged to, which I don't know why it was just wiped out by Facebook, but, you know, usual reasons, I suppose. But um, anyway, you know, this lady was really cool. She did, she actually mailed us like little um, handmade wool caps for our kid when he was born and so on. And um, she just randomly, you know, we, we were like friendly and then, and she, like I said, mailed us this, this little gift, which was, you know, was very nice of her to do. And, you know, we, we kept talking and so on. And uh, she, she told me she had this weird dream where this like huge black sort of dragon-like entity was like floating towards me, you know, and I was like busy like fighting it off or something. And she was like, you know, and I was trying to pray for you, but I got so scared that like, oh, if I start to pray, this creature might actually look at me and focus on me and I, it would just, you know, it would be too powerful for me to handle. And I was like, yeah, I kind of know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, you know, you have to have a very strong, um, you know, I'm not a particularly good Catholic, but I, I am a very convinced one. So I suggest if you, if you are getting this kind of thing, just do more. My, my um, you know, the best defense is a good offense, is a, is a good statement for these things. So the more you feel attacked, the more you go to church, the more you spread the word, the more, you know, I got attacked and, attacked and I wrote believe. Then I got attacked more and I wrote like reclaiming the Catholic church. And it's like, yeah, attack me more, I'm going to do more. You know, attack me a bit more, I'm going to build a chapel. <laughs> you know, it's like, so it's like they kind of leave you alone because it's like, oh, fuck this guy. If we poke him a bit, he just flares up. He just, you know, the, the line in uh, in believe, which I've been quoted on and, you know, it's, it's a thing that came up, which is like, remember that sometimes spreading the light means setting fire to enemy encampments <laughs> so and um, I think on that philosophy they, they you, that's the best way you can defend yourself is become a proper Catholic put you know like crucifixes in your home pray the rosary but more of all most of all believe you know you're not given to a spirit of fear you are you're a Catholic so you can fend off these things you know, it's like the old vampire movies, you know, the guy with the cross and he's like, back, fiend! <laughs> that's that's kind of it. It's kind of a good way to think about it. Under Bear says, your wood cutting and brush clearing operations look like that keeps you in shape. Perhaps a Lamborghini tractor in the future or donkey. Dude, I'd love a Lamborghini tractor, but even a second-hand one are like 20 grand. So, you know, unless you guys start buying my books in droves or... Um, Actually, 
I've, I've switched on, but I have, maybe I'm still I still have to do stuff about super chats and stuff like that. I don't know. It's it's something that. But yeah, unless you guys go to the Kurganet and keep donating <laughs> a bunch of money, I don't have 20 grand right now to buy a, a tractor, which is really something I do need. But yeah, a huge a tractor would make a huge difference because there are strips down between the, the vineyard that I could you could plant stuff in. There's a lot of just generic little earthworks and, and clearing that I want to do, which you a, a small tractor would be perfect for. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I have to think of a, of a way to get a few tens of thousands of, of bucks to do that. So, Grampus Aurelius. Hello, sir. It's been a long time since I saw you. Hey, he says, I may have sleep paralysis twice in my life and recently my girl and I could have for a night each between between us first her then me then her then me all within an hour um yeah like I said best best thing you can do to defend yourself is counterattack Willie Ram when it comes to malicious spirits our lady and Saints Joseph are ever ready to swat some fallen angel yep he says, we have to pray together until they stop. It's not even something I know anyone to bring up the topic other than you. Uh, well, I've had an interesting life, what can I tell you? I don't talk about it that much because it sounds so insane. And, and it's just, you know, I've talked about the UFO stuff. And on the I did the commentary on the, on the Bob Lazar joe rogan video and that like was a bunch of people saying you're crazy he's like mentally unstable <laughs> it's just like no it's just what i've seen and experienced and and, and know of you know um and the, the 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 demon stuff is even more unbelievable than that but again i'm a very skeptical person and i've trained as an engineer and that's pretty much my um how my brain works it's engineering it's real science you know You've got theory, and then you've got engineering. That's real science. Because if you can engineer it, then it's real. Otherwise, yeah. So that's how my brain works. I, I am very skeptical, but these things have given me personally objective ways to know that they're real. Um, they're objective for me because, you know, I'm there. I'm part of it. I know what my life's like. I, I remember what happened. I know certain things the way they were and then the way they weren't and so on. But to an outside person, somebody that's not me, I can't prove that to them. Um, I can certainly give them a lot of evidence, but you know. But yeah, I would say that the main thing is pray. Um, if if need be, get a get a proper priest. He has to be a real priest, a set of a priest, to do an exorcism. This stuff is gonna keep growing because you can see what's going on in the world. You can see what's happening. You can see the people running things. The attacks on, on proper Christians are gonna increase, not decrease. So armor yourself. You know, you gotta become really tough. And personally, I'm 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 not particularly worried about these things. Um, I worry more about them affecting people near me rather than myself. Um, I think my kids are pretty safe because, again, I I am the overall influence over them. Uh, but other adults, uh, you know, they can be weaker than you are, you know, like maybe your wife is, might not be as, or your girlfriend or whatever, or your brother, your sister, you know, people that are physically in your, in your present, you know, part of your family, but they're not necessarily aware of these things. They can be more affected. So, um, you know, be careful and become the shield, you know, become the guy that is so scary to them that they'd rather not tangle with you. Of course, the more powerful you become, when you do get attacked, they send in, you know, instead of the, the pawns, they send in the the big guns, but that's just life. you got to keep improving, you know. Under Bear says, malaria sucks. I had that once from a South American trip. Um, yeah, my brother, my, my dad, my mom had it, but no... Uh, my dad had my, my dad and I think I'm immune. Apparently, I'm immune to malaria. I never got it. I got, I, I'm immune to a, a bunch of weird things. I don't know. I've got like mutant blood or something. 
but not that mutant, you know, original mutant, not serum mutants, you know. He says, I actually wanted to know if any exorcism information would be helpful. Ah. Yes and no. Um, you know what they say, little knowledge is a dangerous thing. So you can inform yourself on, on exorcism, but then if you think that you are now a paladin of the church and you can go and exorcise demons, you're going to get yourself into trouble that is way above your pay grade. Um, you know, get holy water, sprinkle it around, pray, and like cast them out. Nothing wrong with you trying that. Um, but if you want a proper full-blown exorcism, then get a priest to do it. That's That would be my uh, my suggestion. Holy Ram says, Florida man has involves a tolerance to all things except for clothing and common sense <laughs> i know a guy that lives in florida that's a pretty cool dude josie any search youtube for father chad ripperger he's an exorcist and he's really good in form demonic activity yeah but he's an always order so i would take everything he says at the very minimum with a pinch of salt and in fact, personally, I ignore everything any Novus Orco says, because if you're Novus Orco, you are a knowing, intentional deceiver. If you're a priest of Novus Orco, as I call them, not Novus Ordo, Novus Orco, New Orcs, then you're an intentional deceiver. You're either criminally incompetent or you're an intentional criminal. Either way, you're a criminal. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't do that. I would go to a set of Acanthus priest. You know, go to luxvera.org, you can find a priest if you don't have one near you, you can at least phone one and ask them what to do. Oh. Yeah, Wooly Ram says exactly the same thing. You should talk to a loyal priest. Josie, and what Wooly said, definitely, if it keeps happening currently. Hello, Colonel. Sam E says to AE, memorize the Jesus prayer, the Fatima prayer, and of course the Hail Mary. And as Wooly said, see a local priest. Yeah. Driftless. Hello, sir. I, I enjoy Driftless. It's little... He, on Social Galactic, he, he like throws up these comments that end up having like long threads, which I quite enjoy. Uh, Cordell says, Kurgan, have you heard of the Collins Elite? No, I have not. Um, educate me. Tell me what it's about. He says, that's my first thought. I must do that next time I travel to a real church. And Sam, I'll do that, thanks. Yeah. Josie says, staying in a state of grace and prayer are the best defense. Indeed. He says, I had some demons I didn't consider basic till recently. Completely mess with me in my sleep, where I always know I'm sleeping and struggle to escape. We always have to wake each other to save each other. Yeah, don't... I would say don't buy too much into it. Don't give it too much power. Don't, like, obsess over it. You know, and it's like, oh, it's this big deal. You know, it's just a thing. Just deal with it and, and deal with it in a brutally pragmatic approach. You know, if you go in there and, like, get all caught up in the, oh, I have demons following me and they're attacking me and so I must be important and, oh, I have to save my girlfriend and she has to save me and it becomes a big drama thing. That's also, like, illusion, you know? So just deal with it. It's, it's like a mosquito, you know, or a bee or a bumblebee or a bunch of mosquitoes. You know, it's just a problem. Bigger, smaller, whatever, deal with it. I got mosquitoes, you know, there you go. I'll add up one of these. I got demons, yeah, I'll get the rosary. Get some holy water, call a priest, you know, do what I need to do. If I gotta rip out a huge tree and my little hand axe or whatever isn't enough, I'll call a guy with a tractor to chop it down. You know, this is the same thing. It's just a very be very pragmatic about it. Don't don't like get all caught up in your head about it and go crazy over it. It's uh, it's not a big deal. Just just handle it. Drifter says, I haven't had paranormal type attacks like that, but I've had strong mental blocks, concentration issues and weird mood swings type things all feel spiritual in nature. They might not be. Um, here's a weird encounter I had a couple of, maybe not even two weeks ago, maybe a week ago or so. 
I stopped off at the local hardware store where I pick up a bunch of stuff, you know, and I'm, by now they all know me there and whatever. And there's a, a lady at the counter that was really very cool person. And she knows everything about like anything to do with hardware stuff. And, and plus she's just a good, decent human being. You know, she, um, when I first got here, she gave me the addresses of various doctors for my children, whatever. And, um, you know, and I, I looked at her and I said, hey, how are you doing? You, you look tired as well, eh? And she was like, yeah, man, I don't know what it is. And that day, both myself, my wife, we were like in the afternoon, we we're like, man, I don't know what's happening. I'm about to pass out while I'm walking, you know? And I said this to her and, you know, she looked at me and I go like, what, you reckon it's the heart for the guys? And she goes, yeah, I do. And then she told me about something I hadn't heard of before called uh, picchioroso, which is... Uh, what do you call that bird that chews into the tree like a woodpecker? So like the idea, the, the translation would be red woodpecker because apparently the Russians or whoever had like this, uh, it's extremely low frequency vibrations that like make a sound like tuk 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 that some people can hear and it like fucks with your head. And you know, this stuff is real. There's um, actually posted on... Was it on the Kurgan Telegram channel that I was like required reading? Like on Gab, definitely I did it on Gab. Uh, about the stuff, you know, that they they have the ability to... Joe Valls wrote about that. Joe Valls is now dead. He's the guy who basically proved that the Port Arthur massacre was like fake. As in, it happened, people died. But, you know, the guy that they put in jail for it, um, Briant, is, is not wasn't responsible for it he's like a, a guy who's got 95 iq is you know he wasn't there and so on but um anyway he, he talked about how in the rwanda war and that the massacre that happened you know between the hutu and the tutsi was basically the americans fomented a crowd and then they had this um planes with like this like beam that hit the crowd and, and and this beam can produce aggression, sleepiness, whatever. And it can be very focused to like within the limits of the crowd. And all it does is it really amplifies what the crowd's going on. And basically saying, you know, like from like a few disagreements and like, oh, a couple of rocks being thrown, all of a sudden this beam switches on and these guys like go completely homicidal maniac chopping limbs and people up. Um, and he talked about how they, it happened in the Iraq war as well outside the museum where, you know, at first they had some people protesting and then it was like they had a couple of people like run into the museum and all of a sudden the crowd just all went towards the museum, which is like n not normal. You know, people don't behave like that. I know there's like mass psychosis, you know, like the, the, the psychology of crowds and so on. But he talks about this technology and, you know, we're talking, I, I remember reading Jovial's in the 90s. So this stuff has been around a long time and they can pinpoint it. I mean, there's whole villages in some lost bits of Russia where like the whole village like falls asleep for like two or three days in a row. And it's like people, don't, they just fall asleep in the street and it happened for like a period of weeks or months and then it just like stopped. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that, you know, they're doing this stuff, switching it on and on. There was a program, a series that was like, you know, like Lost, those crappy series. I've never watched Lost because I couldn't stand, I couldn't stand it. But there's this series where it starts out with like oh, a bunch of birds just dying and dropping out of the sky, and it was like these. It turns out that it was basically this technology that was designed to like make the flow of all the possible outcomes go in one direction only, which is what Looking Glass is. So it was a TV program, a TV series, which just again sort of suddenly ended when they ran out of cash or whatever. But um, talking about real things, so I wouldn't necessarily say that that stuff is spiritual in nature. It could be technological in nature. Um, and Woolly Ram says, it's not our power that defeats demons, it's Jesus Christ. Agreed. Focus your mind on him and on one of his many wounds. Yeah you know, do it in the in the name of Jesus Christ is the correct way to do exorcisms and, and getting rid of these things anyway. And also say it out loud, you know, I belong to Jesus Christ. I'm not, I'm not, I don't belong to you. My master is, 
my king is Jesus Christ, not yours. So. Then recently I noticed, oh, Amy says, then recently I noticed an extreme difference in hierarchy. I can't say it's the Satan, but it ain't no mouth. Recently I heard about the 222 fallen angels and made me think. Again, Amy, I think you're over-dramatizing and overthinking it. Um, don't. Just deal with it like, you know, a leaking kitchen sink. It's the same kind of deal. Holy Ram, also be careful in your dreams. Even there, demons can make offers. Cordo Mitchell says, I've had experiences where something pulls my leg when I'm trying to sleep, or I feel a great weight set on me and a sense of dread comes over me. I play Gregorian chants at max volume. That seems to drive off whatever is happening. That's, that's a good... That's a very good suggestion, actually. A.E. says, yeah, the dreams are whack enough, but the wake encounters I've had were, well, let's say, hard to describe. Yep. Sam Werub says, Ripperger is obviously super gay. Well, there you go. I wouldn't listen to... You know, people going, oh, uh, Ripperger, oh, this other guy. No, they're novice order. End of. It, you know, it's like saying, well, this pedophile is not that bad. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's not a gray area. It's a very clear black and white line. Holy Ram, someone like Father Rippinger, he's not a father. He's like a Moloch servant or whatever. Has no excuse or defense. He's obviously knowledgeable of traditional Catholicism, yet remains in communion with the Novus Orco. Yeah, it's, uh, these people are not fathers. They're not priests. They're servants of Moloch. That's it. That's how you should think of them. That's how you should label them. That's what you should call them. They're novus orkins. They're not Catholic. Driftless, I've encountered demons in dreams a couple of times. Always felt protected by angels, etc. Pray, 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 and pray some more. Yep. Cordo Mitchell's allegedly the Collins elite was a faction within the U.S. government that viewed the UFO crisis and ET activities as demonic activity, and they believed Jeff Parsons opened a portal to hell. And that's why the UFO sightings took off. Is Jeff Parsons the guy that was involved with Lee Harvey Oswald and who sort of started NASA? Or that was another guy, Jack something. I'm terrible with names. I'm not sure I know who Jeff Parsons is. Jeff Parsons was a big shot at JPL and was a student of Alistair Crowley. Ah, there you go. Yeah, the, the beginnings of NASA, Lee Harvey Oswald, the patsy for the JFK murder, um, is, is a very freaky story and it does have Alistair Crowley in, in there. Under Bear says EL, ELF, yeah, extremely low frequency vibrations. NR, hello, sir. Isn't religion an evolutionary coping mechanism? No, it's not. Uh, but given what you've told me last time about your particular belief system, I think you're like borderline men going their own way. Don't go down that route. Uh, religion is not a coping mechanism. It's uh, a reality. And like all realities, they get twisted. So, if you don't have the right religion, you're wrong. Just like <clears throat> if you don't have the right physics, you're going to suck at building airplanes. AE says, thanks for the tips, Kurgan and crew. We'll do a lot of praying and it helps. And we plan to drive the fifth soon. To go to Mass and bring it up to... There you go. For a while the tanks ramped up and I think that they have calmed down a bit and become less frequent. Yeah, good, but just remember, don't over-dramatize the thing. Right, uh, I've been going nearly an hour. Now, the topic was the truth about the farm life. <laughs> um, generally, the truth about farm life, some of you will know. I suspect under bear might. There are people pretending to be farmers who stream like four or five hours a day. Um... And those are not farmers, you know, like or homesteaders, whatever the Americans call them. I, I don't know why I don't like that, that word. But basically, if you've got a piece of land or you're thinking of buying a piece of land to, you know, 
become self-sufficient. It's doable. Um, but don't think it's easy or, or painless or you know not hard work. It's it's a lot. Probably th certainly from a physical point of view, it's a lot harder than doing your nine to five, no doubt. And it's endless. It, you know you don't really get weekends. You don't get time off. I mean you can get time off whenever you want, but there's all the stuff that needs doing. I can't imagine having farm animals. That would just be one step too much for me. Um, but at the same time, if you're going to, you know, think that you're going to make a living planting your food and that, you can't really, you know, to become fully self-sufficient is, is a big, big deal because for me personally, the biggest expenses at the moment would be the electricity and gas. We could do without the gas, you know, we can survive without the gas because we've got this sort of thermal kitchen stove thing that like heats up all the, the radiators that we have in the, in the house um, and you can cook on it and it's got an oven and it's got a hot plate so you know potentially we could live just of that I'm not saying it would be easy or fun but it's certainly doable um, and that doesn't require any gas but um, we do require the gas for the hot water to like wash with um, there's Potentially, you could also get that uh, that same stove to do the hot water for the sanitary water, like the, the water that you shower with and so on. It's possible, but I'd have to find out where the, the um, where the, the, the plumbing is for that under the, the floor, and um, that would be a pretty big job. And also, in order to do that, it becomes a pretty complicated situation in terms of what you need to attach to the stove. So it would be a pretty big job that would cost a few thousand bucks, but it's doable. Um, and if you have a setup like that, then you can basically heat your whole house and your whole water just by burning wood, which I've got plenty of because I've got literally a few hectares of forest that with like dead trees in it that I, I literally just need to go cut them up and bring them up. Um, so it's doable, but in terms of um, the electricity, you know, I, I watched um, a video of some guy uh, called Raising Voyagers. It's quite quite interesting because it's a husband and wife and two daughters, and um, they're very American, and it's very like you can see they're like, oh, and this is what we're doing now. You know, it's it's like a bit, I don't know, it's not really my cup of tea. Let's put it that way. But um, there's some interesting effects of it. And, and, and they are kind of endearing because they're kind of like these two podgy people. And they're like, the wife's always happy and laughing, you know, and, and the, the kids are pretty cute, I guess. But, and the husband also doesn't look like, a, you know, a guy that would go and start building something. But they bought a house recently in, it, in the north of Italy in Veneto. And they're busy putting it together, sort of like that other marching or whatever was his name, the the guy was like he's like forty. The guy who like went around the world on his bicycle, and then he bought a little um, broken down sort of um, shepherd huts in the north of Italy as well, near the mountains, and then he's building them up. Um, and yeah, those guys are, you know, they they were talking about the Bluetti, like, and he's saying that he's powering everything because then the electricity in the, in the property that he bought. With this Bluetti, which is with a with an extra battery, which powers all these tools, does his lights and so on, and um, and it looks like a very good piece of kit, but it's like seven grand. So again, you know, if I'm gonna put up solar panel, you know, that's about what it would cost me to do the solar panels and that anyway. So yeah, there are solutions, but um, and I I would love to be able to to do that because long time you pay for it within you know a couple of years you'd probably pay for your your whole electric bill um but again i don't have seven grand to throw at that at the moment you know if if i were to buy everything that i need to like get things to work the way i want them to i'd probably need a minimum of about 50k because a decent tractor with all the attachments would be about 20 grand and then you want at least another 20 grand or so to build a decent solar power type thing. Um, 
and then you'd still have 10 grand left over for like maintenance and little odd jobs and fencing the property, which is something I would like to do, but you know, there's a lot of ground to cover. So it's, uh, it's difficult. Um, Nick Stebbin says, reminds me of the Aristotle quote, he who is unable to live in society or who has no need because he is sufficient for himself must be either a beast or a god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm certainly not a god, but <laughs> you, you <laughs> I don't do well in, in society at large. I mean, I can exist there. I have done so for a long time, but I grew up pretty wild. I don't really need a bunch of other people near me. I do enjoy my friends, good people that I like hanging out with. But, you know, they're not, there's not many of those guys. And I have very good friends all over the world. But um, they're not often all in the same place. I've made a couple of um, very decent friends here. Uh, one guy, unfortunately, his, his mother like passed away on, um, on All Saints Day of all things. So I said a few prayers for, for them and, you know, feel free to say a few prayers for my friend. You don't need to know the name and all that. Just um, his mom, like, was on the way out for a while. Uh, she was bedridden and so on and used to go down every weekend to see her. So now he's spending some time with his family. Oh, we got a, we got a band. Uh, yeah, a little porn band. Six finds biz band. Yeah, there we go. Band them all. Ban. There we go. Okay. And um, and his dad is ill as well. So you know his mother just passed away. His dad's not doing well. So, but he's a really cool dude. And um, you know similar way of thinking. Um, he lives in, in an apartment and he's got a full time job. But um, you know he's got property where where his parents are and sort of further a little bit further south. And, um, and he's also got a bit of property in Kenya, which he was asking me, like, what to do with it. And I'm like, dude, just develop it, you know. It's like, it could be an income, it could be a bolt hole, you never know. You know, it's like something worth looking into. Um, so, um, <laughs> Drifter says, what Kurgan is saying is we need to buy 25,000 copies of Believe or Reclaiming the Catholic Church. There you go. There you go. He gets it. And I mean, look, you'd be doing a, a service to humanity by spreading those books. Get your churches to buy them. <laughs> or get your communities of um, rebels <laughs> to buy them. Or, or, you know, just go to thekurganet.com and just donate the cash. I'll Honestly, the, the, I have received a couple of hundred bucks here and there from... Uh, people who just randomly donated to the Kurgan and I've made sure to email them their, their thanks. Um, and that money definitely, you know, it doesn't go to any luxuries. It'll go to making the Kurgan happen. Now the Kurgan is happening. Um, there are people coming over in the next few days to come and look at some more properties and so on. There's a, a small group of young guys that are uh, going to, they're willing to pull the resources together if they can find a property, a suitable property to purchase near me. Um, and the idea is, you know, if if you're a set of vacantist and you're coming to live near me, you don't need to buy a, a property with a lot of land. You can just buy a property that's really close to me, a little apartment in the village or whatever. That's fine because we've got a lot of land, you know, and the idea is not to like, hey, it's my land. And, you know, the idea is, Yes, it's my land, but if you guys are set of vacantists and we're all helping each other and we can grow stuff on our land to feed all of us, why not? That's the whole point. You know, there's enough wood to like heat up all our homes. There's enough uh, land to plant stuff. There's enough people to like help me prune the trees and, and keep things in order so that we get a better yield, that we get more oil and, you know, that we can look at the truffles we can fence off the area you know we can protect it from like fucking truffle thieves and we do all of that you know then it becomes a, a going concern then it becomes uh, 
something that can support people that can provide an income but it it's it takes more than one man you know like it's like five hectares of land of one for one guy so you could, i don't know maybe some like farmer from 300 years ago just you know using his testicular fortitude and his scythe could do it but <laughs> i don't know that's not me maybe i spent too much time making little videos for you guys or talking or writing a book or doing all the other things you know and plus with like a, a lot of young kids it's you know i should have had them like 30 years ago then yeah fine it would be it would be easier but uh, you know it is what it is we are where we are so being well adjusted to a profoundly sick society is no sign of mental health some indian mathematician uh yeah it might have been krishna murti i'm not sure Cordell Mitchell says, this closed thermal piping systems that absorb tons of heat from sunlight and it acts like a boiler heating system and pumps the heat into your house from radiators. Uh, well, we have a very small version of that on the chalet. So it's like this black pipe. It's just like a black pipe that's been turned into a coil on top of the roof of the chalet and it sort of warms up the water in summer a bit that you probably don't need to like you know put a gas on to to shower but again that's in summer i don't know um i think they require a pump to move the water through the systems but i don't know yeah I'll, you you need a pump to push things through the, the radiator but the, the stove that i've got like came with a little pump which um which is enough seems to be enough you do need a bigger pump if you're going to do the sanitary water as well so that is about 700 bucks I've, I've been told but then the thing is you need to install it properly and the, there's certain things that go with that like for example the little water tank that provides the water for the whole system has a leak on it because the i don't know the joint doesn't work well or whatever and uh, the guy's supposed to come this week to sort it out. He's the same guy that's also going to help me with the gasifier. And I need him to do a couple of technical things for the next bit. Um, after which, hopefully, I can hit the ground running and just get that gasifier done and out the way. He says, I've considered buying Believe in bulk, starting with 10 copies to hand out the best potential soldiers. Thank you. Um, you know, that that is awesome um you know honestly it would need to be thousands of books for for it to make a dent but the point is the more people you you send there the more people get saved the more people become catholics and i'm sure there's some kind of a return if not in this world in the next because i need all the help i can get in the next one i'm telling you i know that so um yeah thanks for doing that that's awesome Thriftless says, I've given away a couple of copies of RTCC. Yeah, Reclaiming the Catholic Church has been given away to, like, priests, uh, both Seder priests and um, non-Seder priests. Um, Thriftless says, I'm planning to give my current copy to a based Seder woman I met at Mass. Well, thank you very much. That's the spirit, guys. You know, the, the, the point is to spread the word and to make other people aware and, and help them. Um, with their own spiritual journey so Willie Ram says in Israel most apartments and houses have solar panels used to heat a water tank for showers and dishwashing since it's sunny here for eight months each year they're handy there's a lot of solar panels here too but um, I spoke to a guy who like installs them in that and you know basically to run a house it's uh, you need a lot of solar panels and it's not cheap um, it's not cheap to install it you know it will cost you like 20 to have a fully functioning house that only works off solar power that's got batteries big enough and that will take you through winter you know most of the time it's like a 30 minimum of 30 grand thing i think if you build it yourself you know i've been looking into it and sort of keeping my eyes open if you do it yourself it might you might be able to get away with doing it for like maybe 15 
it is something that I eventually want to approach, but I've still got bigger problems to deal with before I get to that. Um, and if you know, if you had to tell me, well, what do you want to get? A solar panels that run the house or a tractor? I don't know. Um, it would be nice not to have electricity bills anymore. That would certainly help, but so would a tractor. I, I don't know. It's a it's a tough call. You know, I, I need to. I have another plan for. I, I just need to get the gasifier done. But um, once that's done, I um, I do have another really interesting Kickstarter project, which would be maybe even better than the than the gasifier. Um, but uh, it would require quite a lot of people to to sign on to make it viable because. It would take a bit of money, but um, you know, I reckon it would probably be a minimum of about twenty grand. And the results are a little bit iffy because it's sort of an experimental technology. But um, I know it used to work. I know it's it's an old but new technology. But again, kind of like the gas fire, but even better. And if I can figure it out, that could be a serious game changer for not just me but for everybody. So. It would be a project that I don't know whether it would get funded because people probably would just think it's like nonsense or something. But you know, let me get the gas fired on and then we'll we'll see. Uh, Drifter says I gave one to the famous order priest Father Altman. No idea if he'll read it or not, but I felt compelled to drop one at his parish with a note addressed to him. Uh, well, I've sent one to the church that Mel Gibson has addressed to him. I don't know if he ever got it. <laughs> I, I suspect probably somebody along the way would, would pilfer it. But yeah, I did send um, both, I think both Believe and Reclaim the Catholic Church to Mel Gibson. I hope he gets it. Holy Ram says they don't convert to electrical power, just heat water directly. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, what? They've got solar panels that heat the water directly. Okay. I'm not sure that I've come across that before. I need to educate myself on it. He says, I've installed and wired panels and batteries at my dad's cottage and let me warn people who live in cold winter areas. It's a huge difference between summer. Yeah, you know, it snows here. Um, and sometimes it rains for a few days in a row. It still gets some sunlight, but yeah, it's... Uh... Nick Stebbins, theoretically you could have a flat copper plate held slightly above ground and use that as a capacitive solar panel at lower cost. Theoretically you could have uh, metal rods into the ground and lifting them a meter or so for every meter you get a certain amount of current between the I don't know it, it's again it's stuff that I need to have the time to like investigate and experiment in order to do it and in order to have the time to do it I need the money <laughs> to just be able to investigate so kind of a vicious circle angle of the Sun cold batteries and snow on the panels the closer to the equator the easier yep Wonder Bear says that would be more of a solar heat exchange system than solar cells. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, the point is solar panels or not solar panels. The farming life is not for everybody. It's 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 tough work. You know, if you think that you're if you've got this idea of like, oh, I'm just gonna idyllically sit on my ass and the trees will feed me, yeah, that's not really it. And you know, even just picking the, the fruit from the trees we don't we, this year we didn't really get to do it because we like got busy or whatever and you miss those two or three days birds will have eaten it you know the fig trees are the best ones because they produce the fruit in like for a long period or like over about a month maybe even two months they'll still produce fruit that becomes ripe throughout that period uh, but the cherries you know you've got a limited you got a, a window of like a couple of days, and if you don't get them all, then the birds will get them. And in order to get the ones that are right at the top, you need special tools, and you know. So, like now for the olive harvest, really, what you really want is an electric, uh, one of those 
I don't know what, you know, the way you collect the olives is you basically use a little rake, little plastic rake to rake them down by hand, and that's the old way of doing it. But now in the modern things, they've got these rakes that you just shove against the tree and it like shakes everything. And those things in like 10 minutes, you do a tree. But they are like nearly a grand each. Um, so I'm going to look at whether you can hire one for a couple of days or what. So it's uh, whatever you're doing in farming, it's, it's not an easy process. It's a lengthy, you know, um, it's satisfying. Don't get me wrong. Um, Drifter says it's best to start small vegetable garden, learn to can get five to ten chickens yeah i know we did a little vegetable garden and it's like overgrown with weeds and we planted stuff and i put the compost in and we planted stuff and still weeds <laughs> so i you know i don't know i think the way that i need to do that little vegetable patch is i actually need to build a decent greenhouse to keep the bugs and the other things and weed it properly um Unfortunately, I think that's probably the way we need to go. And yeah, the, the chickens, um, I've actually got a friend that's uh, given me some eggs already. And uh, she's only got like three, four, five chickens or whatever. And they, they produce enough eggs for her that she's given me some as well. So um, the next time I, I go there, I need to get a... Oh, I asked her, I said, like, have you got like little chicks that you can give me and I can raise them and she goes like I don't have a rooster I've only got the chickens so there you go you should move near me guys I'm gonna say good night because my little dude is up again and he's unhappy so good night all thank you for listening and we can do a more farm orientated one instead of spirits one next time thank you